Hey, brothers and sisters out there, this is part two of the conference that I'm holding regarding um, adultery. Um, well, I, I left off, my camera had cut off, but anyway, um, I can't recall exactly what, where I left off what I was saying, but um, I wanted to um, tell you brothers out there, keep it real with your wives. And tell you sisters out there, keep it real with your husbands, okay? And uh, I am in no way holding this conference, you know, um, to, to um, how can I put it? Well, I will just say this. I'm not trying to diminish any other transgression against God's law. But I just wanted to um, talk about this subject specifically because it is a huge problem uh, in this world. And... Um, I just feel like that people should love and respect their spouses, and I feel that they should be faithful to their spouses, and I feel like that, um, look at all the, the effort and the time and the motivation that people have placed into bringing, into uniting themselves with someone and coming together to form a family, and then to just allow uh, that to just fall to pieces, or allow some male or female whore to come in and just trash the marital union. And you know, that's what Satan is all about. You know, Satan is all about destruction, you know. And then, you know, another thing, my sisters, for you all to look out for is beware of these married men out here that are parading as if they are single. And a lot of them, they don't wear their wedding band. Um, I'm not saying because a man doesn't wear a wedding band that he is an adulterer because a lot of men probably don't wear wedding bands for whatever their personal reasons are, but they're loyal to their wives most likely, you know, I would hope. But I just have a huge problem with people that are disloyal to one another. Even if it's a girlfriend or boyfriend relationship, if you're going to cheat on people, why not just be by yourself? And, I, you know, I, I just feel like it is such a disgusting thing to uh, just watch um people carry on with people that are not their lawful wedded spouse as if they are something to be exalted as if it is a beautiful thing i just feel like if people want to be on display then hey let's put them on display let's look at these folks for a second their lives are tore up from the floor up and messed up from the get up people that do that if, if you know if the devil wants to flout himself in God's face disrespectfully and, and openly disrespect the marital union and just do things just to spite God, then, hey, I don't have a problem putting the devil on display. You know what I'm saying? If, if the devil wants to be seen that bad, then I say, by all means, let's look at these adulterers. Let's look at these whores and these sluts and these home records. Uh, these old tramps out here that can cock their leg open for another woman's husband or these old tramps out here that can uh, climb on top another man's wife. That is disgusting. Uh, the, all sin is disgusting. I don't care if it's committed by me or if it's committed by you, but I got to tell you that to me, adultery has a peculiar, a particular type of filthiness to it. The, I, I, it is disgusting. Disgusting. It is abominable. It stinks in the nostrils of God. And I'm telling you that whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And that applies to women as well. Because there's somebody that they stood at the altar with and told a lie, a bold-faced lie, in the face of the Almighty God. Not only did they lie to their spouse, but they lied before God. And let me tell you something. You cannot Play with God Almighty. You would come out better shacking up with somebody that you're not married to than to stand in front of God and take a vow of fidelity to somebody that you know you will not be faithful to. Can I talk this thing out this morning? You cannot play with Almighty God. And then another thing about people that um, operate that way, you know, when, when, when a person commits adultery, that is, that's like... Um, Oh my gosh, that is like a rot in a decay that starts. It's like a cancer. So when they do it one time, they'll want to do it another time. Because see, there, once a line is crossed, there is no going back. And, and, I, and you know, um, I think people take in the marriage vows, they'll say, uh, for better or for worse. And I really feel like that, you know, when they say that marriage is not anything to enter into lightly, 
people really need to take that into consideration because what if the worst is if your spouse cheats on you? Are you going to have a heart of forgiveness? So there's so many things that contribute um, into the marital union that people don't even think about because a lot of people are so superficial and a lot of people get married for financial reasons because they cannot afford to, to um, live by themselves and support themselves financially. So they have to get with somebody that they think have money so that they can live. You know, well, to me, it looks like a parasitic type of um, mentality to me because I feel like I come from the school of thought, um, you should marry people that you're in love with. If you're not in love with the person, why marry them? Why set yourself up um, for a life of misery with somebody that's going to make you miserable and you're going to make them miserable? See, that to me, that's, that's, um, that's foolery. But anyway, you know, it's none of my business what people do. I'm just coming on having this conference trying to shed some light and insight into the situation of adultery and just telling people that when you commit adultery you're working against your own body because the bible says that when whoever you join yourself to sexually you become one flesh right okay so when a man and a woman gets married they become one the two become one just like adam and eve became one uh this is now um bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh adam said of his wife eve you understand what I'm saying? So when you work against your wife or you work against your husband, you are working against yourself. So when karma hits you because of that, you can't blame any, not you guys, but I'm talking about people that, you know, are in that type of um, whore harem or whatever you want to call it, whatever the word is. I don't know if that's a word or not, but um, that, that type of uh, whoredom or whatever, I guess that's, I don't know. Anyway, it, when you work against your spouse, you're working against your own body because the two are one. What man ever hated his own body? The Bible says husbands love your wives, but also women, you're supposed to love your husband. A lot of people may say, oh, well, I married the wrong person. I don't love them. I don't have no respect for them. I'm going to go out and do what I want to do. Hey, that's your business, not mine. The only thing I'm trying to, the only people that I'm talking about is the people that throw it in the face of God Almighty, because really all sin is thrown in the face of God. But there are people that, you know, they may be sinners, but they still they don't flounce it in God's face. See, it, 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 to me, it's a peculiar type of demon that flounce adultery in God's face. Walk around as if to say, pumped up, like, well, I'm going to commit adultery if I want to. This is my, okay. But you're not hurting anybody but yourself. And you're disrespecting God for people that are that way. And so I feel like that for people that are like that, if they want to be on display, look at them. Because they are the example, my brothers, of who not to be. They are the example, my sisters, of who not to be. I have no respect for any man that flounces his whore in his wife's face. I have no respect for any woman that flounces her whore in her husband's face. That's a disrespect. And then a lot of people may say, oh, well, you don't know what I'm going through in my marriage. You don't know what they did to me. No, I don't know. It's none of my business. God knows. But I'm just saying for God, for, just to respect God, why, do, why behave like that? Why make yourself a public spectacle like that? I, I, you know what? I, I know that um, divorce is a touchy subject, and a lot of people don't believe in divorce. Um, a lot of people see divorce as a sin. Um, a lot of people would not marry people that have been married before because um, there's a scripture in the Bible about uh, um, if a man put away his wife uh, or something like that, saving for the cause of fornication, uh, he causes her to commit adultery and anybody that you know, marries her commits adultery. And a lot of people are just afraid of that scripture. So they're like, oh, they wouldn't marry anybody that's been married before. And it is a touchy subject. And I know that people that you know, they feel like if you remarry that you're going to go to hell. And then there are other people that feel like, well, if you remarry, you can repent and then God will forgive you. I just feel like I'm going to leave that subject alone right now, okay? <laughs> I'm going to leave it alone because it's taken so many different directions that I don't want to touch it right now. But what I am talking about is adultery. And, I, and the only thing I can say is that nobody knows what they're getting into when they get married because you can never um, dictate the steps of another person. You can't control them. You can't um, impose on their free will that is given to them by God Almighty. But one thing I will say is that if you're going to get married,